Sparking Wonder Making Connections is an Arts Council funded project delivered by Rotherham Museum Arts and Heritage. Our local communities have been at the heart of this project and we have worked with families who have children under five across many different areas, ethnicities and cultures. This has included community groups, young carers, school area settings and a women's housing charity. Our partners have been absolutely vital in helping us to make these connections and we would like to thank our early help colleagues, the BME Young Carers, Ferrum Primary School and the YWCA for their support during this work. Each of our family groups have been paired with local, national and international artists to co-create activities for and with communities around their stories, experiences, objects and people that mean most to them. Artists specialising in music, dance, drawing, storytelling and photography, as well as early years practitioners, have helped to draw out and facilitate meaningful experiences for these families. At the beginning of the project, we consulted families and targeted particular groups and asking really what they would like to see from the programme, what culture and ideas for activities they would like to be involved in. And throughout the project, we've talked to families, but also observed and adapted the programme to suit their needs and interests. So it has been very much co-produced with our communities and our families. The aim of the project was to use the objects and archives in the collection in the sessions with the artists and families. To start the task of finding objects to use, we invited the artists to come to the museum store and the archive search room where our collections are kept. We talked about the ideas the artists had for their sessions and would suggest objects that they could use and get them out for the artists to look at. Richard wanted to introduce the idea of a giant to the children, so we found a big knee-high boot and also some tiny baby shoes to really emphasise the difference in size. I come from the Romani storytelling tradition, which is about including the whole of the family, so from the very youngest babies right up to the oldest members of our communities. We've been talking about storytelling, we've been teaching some of the storytelling skills, and we've also been trying to include the families and making sure that they have a good time with their children learn a little bit more about story and some of the skills and techniques and would all sort of keep coming back week after week. I think one of the biggest changes is confidence in the children because I think, and also in the adults, when we first started it was all new, they didn't know me, they didn't know what we were going to do. So the idea of my practice really is to be very, very gentle with that, to get people to come in to feel comfortable and it builds up their confidence. I think one of the things that we're trying to do with storytelling is connect people and we're trying to show the similarities rather than just the differences. So we were talking about the Romani language right at first, which has its roots in Northern India. So of course there are lots and lots of different languages that the Romani language has borrowed from. So that was a connection. We're also connecting through story, through the, the actions of story, which are fairly universal as well. So I think for me, bringing people together from different communities, different groups, and sharing something for me has been really, really powerful. And I think it's been empowering for the people who've come along as well. So we obviously wanted to increase parental engagement. Um, after lockdown, uh, we've recently started inviting parents back into school. Um, and we really want to start building those relationships again. Um, and we want to particularly focus on developing the children's language skills. We're noticing that, especially after lockdown, a lot of children are coming in with really low language skills that we wanted wanted to build those up again. We've had families from a range of ethnic backgrounds who have engaged with the project um, and it's had a big focus on value in home language. Um, I think in the past, in previous some parents have thought that we only wanted to speak English at home um, and we definitely do not. We've, we want them to know that we value children being bilingual um, and that if they're proficient in the home language, it helps them develop their second or third language as well. So I think the school have really benefited from, work, from working with themselves. We've worked with Elaine Burke, who's a health and wellbeing practitioner. She's really helped us to look at our programmes and the impact we're making. We have developed a framework that really focuses on the difference we can make with the programmes that we're creating. We've looked at the early stages of child development. We've looked at 
um, how early years fits into the rest of a child's life and how it's the foundation of everything else that follows, how a good start in life is really important. I think the impact I'd love to see is that staff here feel incredibly confident to go about um, creating um, programmes for children and families that they work with and that they really understand the health and wellbeing dimensions to that and they understand how creativity fits into that. So they can look at the museum collections, they can develop really innovative programmes and I'm so excited that that's what I'm already seeing. Um, I'm seeing confidence in the groups that are happening. I'm seeing really exciting works. I'd like them to take away a real understanding that everything is connected. Every single thing that they're doing here has a real value in terms of health and well-being, and that small things can make a massive difference. I was lucky enough to go and see one of Nisha and Tongasai's sessions before they came to choose their objects. Being able to see them do their creative practice gave me more ideas of the objects they could use and what would complement their art. Who would have thought the natural history collections of animals, butterflies and birds would be such a good fit for dance and music? We worked together to plan a session where we could incorporate dance as well as, well as everyday movement. But we've also incorporated poems and um, song into our sessions as well. I, th I think it's had a positive impact on the family as well as the children uh, on this project. For example, one of the very first sessions that we did, um, there was a young mother that came in with a child that was five months old and just listening to the music just made her think about, well, actually, this is an activity that I can take home because she realised what calming effect that it had on, on her child. We've had our welcome song, which makes sure that everybody feels really included in the session. We've looked a lot at sort of just the movements of a child as well. So it wasn't about learning a dance style. It was more about, you know, what type of movements can they do with their bodies? I always think as part of my creative practice, this project really appealed to me just because it's that reminder of how important dance and movement and any form of art or any sort of creativity is right from early age. So it was nice to be involved in a project, not only to co collaborate collaborate and work with a different artist, but also just as that reminder that, you know, we still need to be thinking about how we can incorporate arts and culture right from early years. So I've been playing a uh, kora, which is a 21 string guitar, African guitar, and playing a djembe, which is African drum. So just to back up, you know, the music and um, and the movements, it's been, it's been really good. But to start, I was a bit nervous because I'm, I'm used to working with, yeah, reception kids right up to year 11s but I've never done you know zeros to three year olds so the first week was a bit hard like what am I what, what am I supposed to do with them you know what am I am I playing too loud for their ears is it too is it too quiet second week got better and the third week and now I sort of love it I could do it every day we wanted to take part in the project so that we could meet the family's needs the multicultural diversity that we have here in Eastwood and the fact that we can all come together through music. I feel that maybe we could go for a visit, do a pram push and go up to the museum so that they could see the museum and how day activities there do the same activities we do here, which could bring in more families. What we've been doing with the mums and babies today is we've been trying to recreate a little bit of a taster session for them so that what we've achieved here in, in, in a studio environment, they can replicate at home, but keeping it very, very simple, giving them some very easy ideas and hopefully inspiring them to go away and try and recreate what we've done today. We've tried to blend in the sort of well-being and, and sort of self-awareness in this project by using the medium of, of photography. It is something that you do have to be in the moment to do. So because their lives are very busy and I think when you've got a camera in, in your hand, it's one of those things, one of those mediums that make you just be at ease with yourself and just make things stop for a minute. And I think it's really helped them. You can see them really relaxing. You can see them, they're, they're not so self con you know, you know, the, the confidence has really grown, I think. Yeah. I think they're not as anxious. I can see yeah, the anxieties have gone. Yeah. A lot of them are very, very talented, which is fantastic. Straight away, I could think of a few young mums who had a real interest in art but hadn't found anything that was completely accessible for them. And so often it isn't put at the forefront of their priorities because they've got so many other conflicting things going on. But we hoped that we'd created a space for them to feel comfortable, to express themselves and relax. 
and that they found being creative to lead to feeling a little bit lighter and brighter. They've met new people, learnt new things, been creative. They've been proud of something that they've done. They've laughed, talked. It really has been brilliant. We're hoping it'll ignite an interest and improve people's sense of their own abilities and skills to then maybe build on self-esteem, confidence and self-worth. We've also worked with anti-racist specialist Liz Pembleton and we've really looked at how we can impact within not just the programmes but also Clifton Park Museum. So we've really looked at the stories we are telling in the museum but also through our activities, focusing on a lot of the cultures that we're experiencing in Rotherham but also trying to make the museum a welcoming and safe place for all our communities so the program has been really focused on inclusivity but also we started to really think about how we can democratize our collections but also looking at our exhibitions and spaces so that we can be welcoming to all our communities across Rotherham. The Sparking Wonder Making Connections project has been such um, a brilliant experience because it's meant that I've been able to engage with museum staff, also people who are involved in leadership and getting us to think about those everyday interactions but as well as the role of the museum in upholding those structures and the systems that absolutely maintain uh, notions of, of racism. Thinking about what it means to think more critically around how we engage with children and families and visitors to the museum on an everyday basis. How do we make people feel as though there's a sense of belonging in the museum? What does it mean for the local communities of Rotherham to feel as though they have a vested interest in what is happening in terms of the um, programmes that are here, artefacts that are displayed, and also reckoning with the history of museums in the United Kingdom and their historic role. Some of the considerations that they need to take on board is how they decenter whiteness. What does that mean in Rotherham, what does that mean for, as I said, a very diverse community? I am one of two artists on the project involved in creating activities inspired by the community that we're working with, um, which has involved looking at their daily practices, which have included religion and prayer. So we've done things like prayer mats, prayer beads and mixed media, calligraphy and mark making. I think the the well-being aspect of it has been an important part for me. I encourage art as a tool for well-being and it's something that we've been having conversations with the parents as well as the children to say this isn't just an activity that you just do here. I think the one thing that I take away from working with the museum and this project and the, and the group itself is I've really enjoyed working with my own community and being able to feel like I'm a role model in that particular area. We always look at learning and fun as two different things, but in this kind of atmosphere, we've brought the two together, it's fusion. So young people are th thriving, they're enjoying the learning, and the adults, the f carers, the siblings, you know, the parents, they're also having fun and learning at the same time. So I think fun is a really big uh, element. Other thing is, is for them to learn something. So each session has been a learning, something new, and there's a variety of things as skills of yeah. learners. And the fact that they're taking ownership, that's very key as well, the belonging to the group, which they, they clearly are. I've implemented early years into this project by trying to develop a pop-up environment. So in the space where we're running the activities, creating a free flow space with different areas to explore freely in a self-led way. But each activity supports an aspect of the main making activity. So it allows children to explore a skill. Then go and work on the main making activity with Usma. I think my favourite activity in the project so far has been the movement mark making, inspired by the Arabic alphabet. I think the main thing I'll take away from this project is that I've um, gained confidence to confront certain issues that exist in cultural institutions. So if I see that something's missing from an exhibition or a collection or a learning resource, there's people that aren't represented in that. I've got the confidence now to speak up about that. We will now take this work forward as a national portfolio organisation and use what we have learned to develop our wider offer 
for Under Fives and their families.